Hi, this is Greg Koopman. Today I'm going to discuss a property I stumbled upon in uh, SSAS cubes uh, called Ignore Unrelated Dimensions. And uh, I feel it's a very important uh, property uh, for your users that are using power, uh, that are using pivot tables uh, in coordination with your S uh, analysis services multi dimensional cubes. Um, first of all, I want to show the problem of what uh, I'm, I'm, we're going to try to solve with this new property. Okay, so here I am in a pivot table, and as you can see, I have uh, in the rows column, I have a fiscal year, and I have uh, product model lines from the AdventureWorks um, cube. Okay, so what is the problem? So basically, what we is happening is that when you drag two different dimensions, I'm sorry, two different measure groups or values from two different measure groups, you can get some some visual problems with the data. So here we just dragged on gross profit and this all looks good, right? So it's uh, 2007, we have accessories, components, which are are uh, is part of a item dimension and its attributes and everything looks very good here and very tight uh, and there's no problems. Okay, but then let's say we go up and we change this and we bring in our exchange rates. Now exchange rates is another measure group in the AdventureWorks cube. It has a different granularity than the summary data uh, measure group. So what occurs is something somewhat unexpected and very cosmetically disappointing when you display this. So for example, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on end of day rate. Now look what just happened. This is awful. No one wants to look at this. End of day rate is a one and that's fine and it's a it's a one for the year. Okay, fine. That's correct. But do we really want to see ones all the way down? And even worse than that, these are a bunch of uh, product models that weren't even sold. So just because the way the nature of uh, the display of this different measure group, it's starting to display everything, and uh, it's to it becomes a very hindrance to any user, and it's horrible. So we don't want this to happen. What I did was I went in and created some calculated members and did a lot of stuff with dimensions and and a lot of code, and I got it so that I could put this in a calculated member and it wouldn't show up. Uh, then I decided, well, that's a pretty good solution. I'm going to make a video on it. And then when I came in to make the video, I realized that there's got to be a better way than this. Because, let me show you, because when I dragged the targets, which is also a different measure group, and I brought in its values down here, Look at what happens here. You see how it op where it does not repeat itself at the product level since it isn't part that dimension is not attached to that measure group of quota. Quota is by month, and that's where it shows up. It's showing up by month, and it bubbles up to to the year. That's perfectly the way you want it. That's the way this uh, end of day rate should also appear, but it doesn't. Okay. Now, if I remove end of day rate like this. Look at it. It's beautiful. We have our sales amount quota. It lines up. It makes sense. It doesn't impart a bunch of new rows that mean nothing. Okay, so I said to myself, okay, well, this is weird. Why is this sales amount quota working? But the values, when I go to the exchange rates measure group and I pull its data in, it doesn't work appropriately. Okay, so then I started digging around. I dug a lot to try to figure out how to word this in Google to get some results back to solve this problem. And I couldn't, that's why I went to the calculate member area. But um, anyways, I started, I said, okay, there's gotta be some property or something in here that is making this all happen or not making it happen. So now we're gonna go over to um, Visual Studio and look at AdventureWorks and try to figure out where this all came from. Okay, so now we're in AdventureWorks 
And so what I did was I went into the dimensions. I opened up the cube over here, went into the dimensions tab. And of course the dimensions tab is quite wide and it keeps on going. But what I was really focused on was what is the difference between the, the way they set up sales targets and the way they set up exchange rates. I want my exchange rates to act when it gets to the pivot table the same way sales targets works without a lot of extra coding around calculated members. So I went into their into each of the dimensions, uh, each of the attachments to the dimensions, and the only thing I could see was this was at a higher level, but there's nothing there that really told me anything much different between the two until until I right clicked on the dimension, went to properties, and looked at the difference in the properties here. And when I looked at sales targets, it's ignore dimensions right here was set to false. And then, of course, I went to exchange rates. Oh, and it was set to true. And I said, ignore unrelated dimensions. Uh, okay, it, I, that sounds like it probably is it. Doesn't really make sense. It's almost like a deg double negative. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyways, I said, okay, what the heck? I'll double click. I mean, I'll go ahead and change that to false too. All right. So I change it to false. I save it. And I, and I go ahead and redeploy the cube without having to rebuild it, which was pretty darn nice. I could get that property over there without having to rebuild the cube. So I just went into the uh, solution here, or the database, and I clicked on deployed. So now it's deploying. It gives me a message. It deploys. And now that property has been reset for exchange rates. So let's go over there. Let's see, it's, it's still deploy is started. Come on. Okay, it succeeded. Okay, now we're done. We're over in Excel again. And we're going to go to the area, right? This is the garbage stuff we didn't want to see, right? All these ones. It's just garbage. Okay, that should be blanks. So now, after we changed that property and went to data and went to refresh all, lo and behold, it's perfect. Okay, and that's what this whole thing's about. And this is why it's such a huge thing uh, for your users of pivot tables um, to, uh, for you in the cube to change this property in your dimensions where you don't want the uh, the the problem effect that we had I had showed you earlier to occur. This concludes this video. Please come and see more of my videos at www.sequelcoop.com. Thank you.